Hey guys, let's talk about this pretty cool looking computer that, uh, yeah, actually is quite inexpensive if you want to rebuild something like it. Now you'll notice with the B-roll here, uh, the cooling solution, a little bit overkill. The case, definitely overkill, more expensive than you'd probably want to spend on a build like this. And also, the power supply, also overkill. But these were all just components that I had laying around and that's why they ended up in this build. The performance though can be had for under $500 right now and it's pretty good. Let's talk about it. So core components which I had around and why I put the PC together, uh, the Intel Core i3 10100F, four cores, eight threads, Nothing special, no onboard graphics, that's because it's an F SKU, but still it is somewhat recent core technology, so at least they should be pretty fast cores. And in most games, four cores and eight threads will get you by. Now, it's not gonna be ideal, especially with games taking better and better advantage of more and more cores and threads. It's not ideal, but there is an upgrade path there, and you can get these CPUs for well under $100 on the used market. Actually, you can get it for under $100 on the brand new market. So at least the value is there. Now the motherboard in my system, I bought secondhand for like $70, but if you want to go with a brand new motherboard, again, expect to pay 80 or $90. You could do better on the used market if that's the route that you're going with. I would highly encourage you to do that. Now one place on the used market where you won't do better is with storage and RAM. So the RAM in a brand new system, if you purchase it brand new, it's gonna cost you about $35 for 16 gigs of DDR4. So RAM is very cheap and so are NVMe drives, at least the commodity class NVMe SSDs that I would recommend for a build like this. You could get 512 gigabytes for under $30 as well. And by the way, I'll link components down below just so you can check current pricing and availability because those things fluctuate. Now for an enclosure, a case, just buy one that has good airflow and houses the components. If you're on a budget, don't go crazy on the case, but do purchase something that will adequately serve your needs both now and potential future upgrades. That's also important. Uh, as far as power supply goes, exact same thing. Don't go crazy overkill, but at the same time, if you know you're gonna be upgrading in a year or two, then you might wanna get something with that upgrade in mind, even if it's slightly overkill. Now, you can do pretty well with power supplies if you give yourself a budget of about $55 or so. And that brings us to the GPU in this system. It's one we've looked at somewhat recently that I purchased on the secondhand market, a GTX 1660 Super, which on the new market, you're still gonna pay like $250. There's not many of them on the new market anymore, but if you do find one, and an e-tailer somewhere, it's probably gonna cost you $200 or $250. But if you go to eBay, you can find them all day long, probably in decent condition. Obviously, you know, pick and choose, but about $130, $135 will get you into a GTX 1660 Super. The used market for the GPUs on the lower end, that's absolutely the way to go with. I would not purchase a brand new GPU. Just to put it into perspective, you could buy a 1660 Super, have it work for a brief period of time, have it die, and then you could buy another full 1660 Super, and that would be about the price of a new one. And of course, if it dies instantly, eBay buyer protection is there, so the used market, eBay is a really good way of getting a uh, 1660 Super. So the specs are there. Obviously, if you build it as cheaply as possible, it probably won't look as good as the system we're looking at here, but it should perform identically. Speaking of performance, Let's look at that. Now, for the most part, I stuck to 1440p for this testing. And for CSGO, the experience was fantastic. Uh, obviously, as you watch the frame counter in the top left of the screen here, you're usually gonna be well over 200 FPS in CSGO. Now, occasionally when you first load into uh, a round of the match, you will see a frame dip here and there, but it's not really something that becomes noticeable while you're actually in the game playing it once the round starts. So fantastic experience, 1440p, high settings, no issue whatsoever. Now, The Witcher 3 on the next-gen update was difficult at 1440p, below 30 FPS, to the point where I would actually not recommend running this title 
at 1440p. But the good news here is dipping down into 1080p range gives us a very playable frame rate where we're seeing a lot of times the frame rate is it's sort of in the mid 50s all the way up to a little over 60 FPS depending on the actual scene. But pretty good experience at 1080p all things considered. Uh, this title with this next gen update is not an easy one to run either. And if you look at the percentages, you might expect the CPU to, to kind of be one of the bottlenecks in this system from time to time. That's definitely not the case with this title. This is a GPU bottleneck through and through, but still in the mid 50s FPS wise for a, a paced game like this, that's not going to be a problem to play the title. So once again, it definitely gets a pass here, though, if you are looking to play it at 1440p or higher resolution, that's when you're going to get into things like dynamic resolution scaling that you're going to have to worry about and kind of do things like that to get that frame rate up a little higher. And this being on the medium preset, if you do want a little more eye candy at 1080p, you do have a little room to raise some of those graphical settings to get more eye candy in lieu of some of those frames. And finally, that brings us to Hogwarts Legacy, and I played a little bit around with this title uh, using the medium preset at 1440p native, no sort of upscaling technologies here. The frame rate was fine. It was definitely playable, still sub 60 FPS though, but that was pretty consistent. And to be honest, the frame pacing was pretty consistent too, so it wasn't really a big deal. But because we do have this game built with these different dynamic scaling options that use AMD's technology, Intel's technology, and Nvidia's different technologies, there are ways that you can boost the frame rate here. Now using AMD's FSR 2.0, we did see the frames jump all the way up to just shy of 60 FPS, and FSR 2.0 worked well, uh, the frame pacing was really good, and the game itself looked really solid as well. But if you're all about getting more frames, that was not the most successful upscaling technology, at least with this hardware configuration. Instead, using the NVIDIA image scaler, we could get the FPS all the way up into the mid 70s, which was undoubtedly a smoother experience and the game still looked really solid. Again, at least with the medium preset using this hardware configuration, that was the best experience that I had. But of course, with your own hardware, you're gonna wanna play around with it. There are gonna be some subtle differences in image quality between the two. So it's one of those things that until you get your hands on it and play around with it a little bit, you can't really make up your mind just based on only the frame rates. You do need to look at the images and kind of decide for yourself which way you want to go with that. But of course, the nice thing with this particular title is you do have tons of options for upscaling and being able to get the most out of your hardware and the most frames out of your hardware, depending on your different configurations. You can play around with AMD, Intel, and NVIDIA technologies all built into this title. So of course, if you've been watching the channel for a long time, you know that it is definitely possible to build really solid gaming PCs for not that much money, considering that anytime you go onto an online website, whether it be Amazon, whether it be Newegg, or whether it be some other websites, like I was looking at Costco PCs not that long ago, if you type in gaming PCs, you're gonna see a lot of machines that are costing one or $2,000. Just understand, you can build gaming machines for way cheaper and still get really good experiences. All of these titles I would be happy to play on the PC here with just four cores, eight threads, a 1660 Super, all of which are kind of old hardware at this point, but would still perform just fine if that's what you wanted to play these titles on. You wouldn't be missing out on the titles themselves by getting a lesser PC. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below what budget PC hardware are you still using in your main rigs? And also, what are some changes to this configuration? Obviously, I'm using parts that I just had laying around, but if you had the same $500, what would you build instead? Let us know down below. Otherwise, if you like the video, do the thing where you like it, share it, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll let YouTube queue up some videos for you to watch after this one's over. And I will see all of you in the next video.